Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I am doing something I have never done before. I'm brewing a lager. Now, uh, for years I've been making ales, never done a lager before, and some of you on YouTube have, uh, on my channel have commented asking uh, if I had or will be planning on making a lager ever. And uh, my first reaction was no, I don't do lagers uh, for a few reasons. One, I don't have the refrigeration space, the refrigeration control or the patients required to brew a lager versus an ale. Ale, from start to finish, you're done in about three weeks. For a lager, uh, it takes a couple weeks of fermentation and a couple months of lagering. So you're looking at close to two and a half, three months of, uh, of wait time. And I normally don't have that, but I took it as a challenge. I thought I'd, I'd try it out. I would make a batch of lager for you and for myself to drink. I'll, I'll make the, the lager video for you to watch, the lager for me to drink, and uh, it's a win-win, right? So I'm gonna make, be, be doing this for the very first time with some new equipment I, I had to purchase for this and walking through the process for, for the very first time. So I'm probably gonna make some mistakes, probably gonna have some successes, I hope, and you, you're gonna see it the good, the bad, and all its glory. So if you want to see my very first lager video, keep watching. Now as I walk through this, I'm only going to cover basically the recipe uh, and steps largely related to the lagering process. I've done a number of ale videos. I've even done a home brewing basics video series that you should go check out if you've not seen those yet. It walks through the whole home brewing process. And so therefore my intent with this video is not to repeat a half hour worth of uh, introductory material, I want to cover the advanced topic of lagering. So if you haven't checked out that homebrewing series, go check it out first. So here's a quick overview of my recipe here today. I am doing this Vienna style lager, I'm my first time doing a lager, so this is, uh, I had to start somewhere, so I went online and looked through some old issues of my copies of Brew Your Own magazine that I have, and I found it a, uh, a Vienna recipe in a 2014 issue of Brew Your Own magazine as my starter recipe, and I tweaked it a bit for my taste and what I have on hand. So what you see here, I have a I have six pounds of Vienna malt, three pounds of Pilsner malt, two pounds of Munich malt, as well as uh, for my hops, I have uh, Mount Hood. I was trying to get a hold of Hallertau, which is what I wanted on here. Uh, the homebrew shop didn't have it, so I went ahead and substituted Mount Hood, which is a offshoot of that uh, hop species. So it's so, supposed to be similar in flavor. So I went ahead and substituted some Mount Hoods in there at five and a half percent alpha acids at uh, one ounce each. So two ounces of it, one addition at 60 minutes for bittering, one addition at 10 minutes for flavor and some aroma. Okay, and I also have my yeast starter, my made with uh, some Munich lager yeast, as well as my uh, some yeast nutrient and some wolf lock tablet for clarification. And of course my variables here as I'll go through and walk through these one at a time as we go about this process here today. I just finished crushing all the grains. So the, all the grains here are all crushed up real nice. So that's already done. My strike water is just about ready to add to the mash. Let's take a measurement here. See what the mash temp worked out to be here, folks. About 151 and a half. Close to my 152, perfect. Okay, let's take a look at the mash here over an hour, probably about 75 minutes actually. Let me get a whiff of that. Oh yeah, that smells good. I love this smell. Well, there we go. So let's go ahead and get this drained. There we go, We've got about seven gallons collected here and it's getting ready to boil. Starting to boil now, so I'm gonna set my timer for, uh, well, a 90 minute boil here, but uh, at about the 60 minute mark, uh, about a half hour from now, I'm gonna start throwing in my hops. So we'll be back. Here are my hops here. So Mount Hood, five and a half percent alpha acids. So I'm gonna throw one in, a whole ounce at 60 minutes, and I'm gonna throw a whole ounce in at the, the, the uh, 10 minute mark. Just coming off the hot break on top here. All right, I'm at the 60 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my whole ounce of five and a half uh, percent alpha acids in there and uh, set the timer again for another 
45 minutes here. Okay, it's down to 15 minutes. I'm going to throw in a roll flock tablet. And I'm going to sanitize my immersion chiller. Just like that. Okay, it's been, we're down to the 10 minute mark now. I got my last ounce of 5.5 alpha acid hops, um, my Mount Hood, so I'm going to just go ahead and pour those in there. All right, it's time for flame out, but I'm going to put a little bit of yeast nutrient in here first. About two teaspoons worth. In order to make this video, I had to come up with a way to chill my work down to 55 degrees Fahrenheit in order to start the logging process. So I had to build a separate work chiller, a recirculating work chiller, and I've done two videos on this. I've done one on how to build one and one on how to use one. And I actually recorded those videos in context of this video. So if you haven't checked out those other two videos, go check those out because it's actually part of this greater process of lagering. Okay, flame out has arrived. So I turn off the gas, turn off the fire. Now I'm ready to plug in my pump here. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in. It's been 45 minutes chilling here and I'm down to 57, 57, 56 actually, 56. So right there, I was going for 55, that's close enough. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the cooler, uh, the uh, restricting pump and rack this thing. And here's how it looks after I've aerated it with some oxygen. Uh, the, the little, all the foam is from the oxygen um, added, being added back into the wort. So uh, the thing is, is, this thing is at about 55 degrees, which is what I was getting it down to, to pitch my Munich lager yeast. According to the package, the optimal fermentation range is 52 to 62 degrees Celsius. So uh, I'm following those directions and I'm ready to add my yeast. I've had to make a pretty big yeast starter for this uh, lager here because lagers, because they're, they're fermented cooler, they grow a little slower, and I compensate for that by making a larger batch of yeast before I pitch it into the wort. Now, I did a separate video on how to build up a yeast starter as part of this lager video. That video, if you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out, it's on my channel. It's called Building a Yeast Starter. And uh, that actually, that yeast starter that I built up in that video is the yeast starter for this lager right now. Now it's time to pitch the yeast. So what I have here is uh, about just under a gallon's worth of yeast starter I made with a Munich lager yeast. And um, I, uh, it's settling out pretty good. It's got a little, a nice little cake, uh, yeast cake down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my beer. For posterity's sake, this is uh, what the wort looks like right before it goes in the fermenter. Okay, so I put it here in my uh, kegerator. So uh, I actually had to buy a temp controller. I have, a, I have the probe in there. You, you see a wire there and a probe over back in here. And uh, that's what I bought yesterday was a temperature controller. I've never had one before. So I am using, let's see, let me get this here, focus. There we go, and this is what I'm going to use. Uh, I bought, bought it on Amazon for I think 30 bucks or so, and I have it set to 55 degrees. So that's what my yeast says it needs. The Munich Lager yeast the package said 52 to 62 degrees. So I chose a spot right at 55, and I'm going to ferment it at that temperature. Here we are, 10 days later, and it's slowing down pretty good there, and just a few bubbles on top, and the airlock has uh, slowed down greatly. So our temperature currently is set to 55 degrees and I am going to increase that to probably close to 65 degrees for a couple days. Late in the fermentation process, it's beneficial to do a diacetyl rest. And this isn't just unique to lagers, it also applies to ales as well. Sort of late in the pr process when the fermentation is just about uh, done and the yeast is just about settled out, it's a good time to let it sit a few days longer at room temperature or in the mid 60s basically. So, but since my lager is 
uh, is being fermented at 55 degrees or so, I have to raise it up to the 60s in order for this diacetyl rest to occur. And this, di this diacetyl rest, diacetyl is, uh, is considered a flaw in beer. Think about uh, natural light, for example, one of the best examples of bad diacetyl flavor. So it's sort of like that buttery kind of flavor that, that, that's in those really cheap beers. Well, you don't want that in your home brew. So you let it go through a diacetyl rest at around 65 degrees for a couple few days, and the yeast will, will, will absorb much of that, and it'll be a much cleaner tasting beer. So it's been 48 hours since I turned up my thermostat to 65 degrees and it actually never quite got there. The highest it got was right below 60. So my basement's a little bit too cool here for it to get any warmer than that. So. Now it's been two weeks since I started this. Uh, so it's been in this fermenter for two weeks in the fridge fermenting during the primary phase. So now I'm gonna go to my lagering phase. So I'm gonna rack it out of here and into a secondary fermenter and continue on. So now I'm gonna turn this thing down five degrees per day until I get to where I, where I want. Now it's time to lager for a while, a long while. Now it's been just over six weeks here and uh, of lagering time actually and I am ready to cold crash this thing to settle out the yeast even further. I'm going to lower this thing from 45 degrees probably down to about 33 degrees, 34 degrees somewhere in there. I'm going to do this to cold crash the yeast to get the beer to clarify even further. Well apparently my fridge couldn't handle the lower temperatures so I actually had to bump it up uh, to about 38 to make it happy otherwise this alarm was going off because the fridge couldn't get down to 33 or 34 degrees at all so I set it to 38 and that's where it's going to stay. It's time to keg this thing. I pulled it out of the fridge and put it on top of my bar here and I got my keg sanitizer off to the left. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this, rack it, uh, put it back in the fridge, carbonate it and wait a few more days and I'll give it a taste. It's time for a taste of this lager here. Let's give it a go. Look at that. Mmm. All right, let's give it a taste. It's been a long time coming here. Mmm. Yeah, okay, hold on a minute. boy uh, well it's a lager success uh, tastes a little bit like Sam Adams which is sort of a Vienna style lager as well right um, so I'm proud of that it's, uh, so it's it's not Sam Adams but uh, it's a Vienna lager it's pretty close it's got a nice color to it nice crisp uh, clean flavor um, the clarity is a little a little bit to be desired here if I remove some of the condens condensation here. It's actually pretty clear, I mean, but it's not crystal clear. And this is okay. This is what I expected from my first lager. Um, that's why I chose the Vienna style because of the color and it's uh, you know, it's not as light and pale colored as uh, some of the co commercial lagers that you can get which are really clear. So, not a problem. So that's pretty good success. Now, some of the things I've learned along the way, some of my comments here is, is I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a lager again for a while. Uh, this is these past two, two and a half months uh, from start to finish just to get this five gallon batch of beer done uh, seemed a bit long for me. And this is largely because I don't have the refrigeration space 
um, to dedicate towards lagering because lagering can take many weeks, right? And uh, I got a single kegerator right here in front of me, which I would like to have beer in all the time. And I can't have beer in here that's ready to drink if I have a lager that's um, lagering at the time. So uh, definitely going to have to invest in a chest freezer with a temperature controller or uh, just an extra spare fridge which unfortunately in this little house of mine is a little bit too small for such an item. So, like I said, this might be my last logger for a while. But I'm going to give it a try. And thanks to some of you for suggesting I try it. And it actually was a learning experience. Um, uh, you know, uh, who knows? I could ch change my mind in the future. But for now, um, I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. And I'll talk to you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. See ya. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.